It's sunrise and this is first flight day. Hey Dave, is this the first flight? Hey firm. Good luck. But it wasn't just our RV-14 that was new to the skies. As Dave launched for flight number one, Glenn was returning from his second flight, having done his first yesterday. Congrats, man. How are you doing? Thanks. That is awesome. Within one day of each other, that's yeah. freaking crazy. All right, ground crew. I guess it's uh, one small step for Dave and one giant leap for the Burford brothers. See, it's an awesome airplane, guys. Roger that. So did you sleep at all? No, not really. Yeah. Well, I mean like, a little. It wasn't so much like the getting up to have to do a test flight, it was like the knowing you have to get up at 4.30. Good day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? It's like four knots down 25. Pretty good. Broken at 8,100. My heart rate's 100 because I've been running around getting all this B-roll, and it's a little bit exciting too. Beyond managing the museum's fleet as the chief pilot, Dave has some solid test flying experience. Foxtrot Bravo Uniform Tank goes on a maintenance release flight, got a new engine on the airplane. I'd like to do an orbiting climb over the airport and uh, maintain uh, well above the traffic pattern for about 20 minutes and then come back down. He's also logged a lot of time in our friend Michael's RV7, including flying it with me to AirVenture 2019. So this is why the plan has always been for him to do the first flight, despite having never sat in an RV14 before. All right, so what's gonna happen here? I'm gonna get in this airplane, and we're gonna close the canopy, and we're gonna find out if it was the right decision for me to get involved in this project. <laughs> so far, it's it's seven-like, but I definitely feel like my knees aren't gonna smash into anything. Oh, pedal position, already way better. Let's tell people how big are you, you're 6'5"? Six 6'5", five? Six five, yeah. 6'5". A lot of torso, too. Reliving this footage from 2019 is a lot of fun. I can't wait to be there again this year. Dave and I will be doing a forum with Vans Aircraft, as well as several other meetups and events throughout the week. Way better. Yeah. Like, a lot of room. There's a ton of room in here. Yeah. Honestly. It's really the perfect setup. And I don't feel like this other seat is, like, nearly as... As tight as the 7. Yeah, we're not going to be, like, holding hands like we did in the 7 on the way down here. It's going to yeah. be perfect. It's really the right size for me. Seven works great for guys that are like 5'10", you know, like the average height of a person, but... Yeah, Dave's a bit of a beast. I'm a bit of a... All right, cool. Gigantor, yeah. And just like in 2019, we'll be giving away a flight in a Vans aircraft at their booth. Stay tuned to the various social media for how to get involved in that. What we're going to do is Greg is going to walk around. You all know what we're giving away here, right? It's rewarding to give back to the community who helped make flight shops possible. We are picking the winner for the RV-14 flight here at Vans Osh-19. Okay, here we go. Ready? We filmed that flight that Andrew won, and in the next episode, I'll share it. But for now, let's get back to the first flight. Okay, so what are we doing? So we cleared the low-speed card yesterday. It was good. It handles awesome. The Hartzell lightweight composite prop is insane. You apply any amount of throttle, and it's immediate response and it's, tra it's like a tractor it like it jumps right out of the saddle it's a beautiful morning today we're going to do the high speed card first but it's going to be combined with the first flight card provided the cylinder head temperatures don't get out of hand after doing the long taxi out to the button of two five shoot one high speed pass just make sure the governor's going to engage properly the airplane's going to feel like an airplane with the tail up uh, roll the power back come off probably around foxtrot maybe india if it's a really short if it, it depends how fast all that happens and if uh, i get back to the hold short and it's under 350 degrees then we'll go flying and if everything you know checks out this was actually June 23rd, literally 30 days before I was expected to be parking the airplane at a very prominent booth at AirVenture. Stay tuned for details on that. So Dave is taxiing out for the first flight. Just a little over two years to get to this point. There's the team coming. Couldn't do it without these guys, and uh, I'm kind of speechless here. 
So how many hours do you guys figure you spent together during this build? Close quarter brother <laughs> bonding? That's a confidential number. Yeah. No one will ever know. <laughs> Temperatures are good. Airplane feels great. Couldn't ask for a nicer day. We had a great time. It's been awesome. It's the first project we've done together. Uh, and uh, we're looking for another one already. Yeah. Window traffic, RB14, Foxtrot, Lima Gulf Whiskey is over Bell River, 2,500 feet, inbound to the field, estimating five minutes, window traffic. You're going too fast. Yeah, hard not to. Windsor traffic, RB14, Foxtrot, Charlie Golf Alpha is taking runway 25 for a high-speed taxi from hotel. Windsor traffic, Charlie Golf Alpha. Temperatures are good, hopefully they stay good. He's on the roll, right? Eh? He's on the roll for the high speed. The EAA test flight guidebook does discuss high-speed taxi, but they don't provide cards, and Vans Aircraft does not officially recommend doing it. Okay, here we go. We got a smartly advance here. Feels like an airplane to me. I took nothing. Had a brief yellow, no overspeed. Windsor traffic, Charlie Golf Alpha, exiting at India, taxiing back to hotel for takeoff 25. Holding short at 25, Charlie Golf Alpha. Holy hell, this thing goes quick. I love the way this dual exhaust sounds. On the first flight card, we're gonna climb initially to 1500 feet. So basically, shooting 25 is the 9,000 foot runway. Do the initial climb at full power start a very gradual left-hand orbiting climb. Gonna go full power to 1500 feet if the airplane will allow it, um, temperature-wise. And then not, basically not touching a thing until 1500 feet. Not gonna touch, just gonna take off and hold the trim. If, it, if, it, if it's heavy in my hand, I'll just, I'm not touching anything until 1500 feet, uh, just in case we have to make an emergency landing. So the bottom line for a first flight is it's all about doing what's absolutely needed. So going fast and using equipment like flaps and trim is not on the table. Winds of traffic, Foxtrot, Charlie Golf Alpha, taking runway 25 from hotel, initial test flight, gonna be departing uh, straight out, uh, turning at the end of the runway in a slow left hand climbing turn. Winds of traffic, Charlie Golf Alpha. All right, so what are we ready for? We're ready for an engine failure on takeoff. We got runway remaining, we're gonna abort. If we have to, we'll take 12. We'll use flaps if we have to put it in. Otherwise, Climbing to 1500 without touching a damn thing. Left tank's looking good, showing 20 gallons, all the gauges are green, mixture is now full rich. Timer is rolling. We're going to be an airplane. Gauges are green. Prop speed is good. We're flying. She's playing, boys. Yeah. That is surreal. Okay. <laughs> the, the throttle is really sensitive, so I guess he overshot when he pulled the power back there. Good airplane. Pulling the manifold pressure back. Ooh, sensitive on the governor now. Yeah, uh, pull it back to climb power 25 squared at uh, 1500 and ask Detroit to get up to 5,000 feet. Do about 10 minutes of just racetrack burn in. So what's the protocol here? He's just going to circle for a half hour sort of thing? Or? He's going to try to get clearance from Detroit to go to 5,000. Oh, right. Glenn couldn't pull it off though yesterday. Yeah, uh -huh. that, sounds, that sounds different from, uh, from yeah. Glenn's. Yeah, well the prop is quite different, right? Exactly. Detroit approach, it's RV-14, Charlie, Foxtrot, Charlie Golf Alpha, with request. Charlie, fast shot, Charlie Golf Alpha, Detroit Approach, go ahead. Detroit Approach, uh, I am out of Windsor, orbiting over Windsor, initial test flight. For flight safety, I would like permission to enter the Bravo up to 5,000 feet, just over Windsor, Charlie Golf Alpha. Charlie, fast shot, Charlie Golf Alpha, squad 4716. 4716, Charlie Golf Alpha. Charlie, fast shot, Charlie Golf Alpha, you're ready to contact, just north of the Windsor Airport there, Detroit Metro, Terminator 3012, what was the type of aircraft again? It's an RV-14 for Charlie Golf Alpha. Charlie Golf Alpha, Roger. You're cleared to enter Detroit's fast travel airspace. Maintain VFR at 5,000. Maintain VFR at 5,000, Charlie Golf Alpha. Appreciate it. And then slow down to Acro VA, 147 knots. Going to do wind-up turns, so uh, 1.5G or 1.4G or whatever, 45-degree turn. 
Manifold pressure is definitely not accurately reading. It's just all over the radar, and I don't think it's actually changing. But it, it's not RPM hunting, that's for sure. Temps are up to 392. Okay, let's go to the right tank. Pressure dropping. And coming back up, fuel flow looks good. Yeah, so the only really weird thing going on here is this manifold pressure wavering between like 23 and 27 all the time. I don't believe it's actually that far out. Yeah, I would say there's there's some anomalies here with uh, higher power settings. Like I'm showing manifold pressure wavering between 23 and 27. It's just it's just cycling up and down. I, I'm not sure if it's instrumentation. If I pull the power back a little bit, it's a lot more stable. Prop governor is bang on. I got 2670 in the uh, initial roll. Otherwise, the airplane is quite stable. It flies perfect, Barry. Roger that. Yeah, so we're at 10 minutes here, so I'm going to start my wind-up turns. 1.4 G, 1.5 G. One point four G turn complete. Going for two. Into uh two G, two and a half and three G. So we wanna just open up that envelope. I kinda was thinking about it last night and what it kinda reminded me of was like playing old real-time strategy games where you're like the fog of war, like you don't send your units into the black until you've explored the envelope, right? I don't wanna figure out that the airplane can't take two G when we're, you know, turning base on a choppy day or something like that. So we're just gonna clear all that up. There's 2.5. 2.5 wind up complete. Airplane feels good, so I really don't have anything to be terribly concerned about with it. Going for 3G. Close enough. Once those are done, going to slow down to essentially 75 knots just to see some low speed handling characteristics in, in level flight with some trim. And uh, once that's validated that it's, you know, it will fly 75 knots with no anomalies, return to the pattern, 85 knot approach speed, flaps up. So it's going to be a fast approach. Yes, it's going to need some runway up, but we have 9,000 feet of it, so who cares? Yeah, it's going to be a power on descent for me, so I'm going to be a while. I'm just clearing through 4,000 here. I got the prop in to try to get a little out of it here. Man, this governor is perfect. At the end, we'll assess and troubleshoot the few snags that we ran into as we get ready for the second flight. The slow speed handling had gone well, so I'm going to keep this edit fairly linear for the rest of this flight into the landing. There's not much to say. This thing, like, just, it's so nice out, and the airplane flies so well. Okay, we're getting ready to land now. Looking for 85. Which traffic, Charlie Golf Alpha, is in the uh, left hand downwind 25. It'll be a full stop. Okay, mixture's full rich, prop is full fine. Fuel is good, engine's all healthy. Oil's a little, a little toasty, not gonna lie. A little rough at uh, low speed. We noticed that the fuel servo was set a little bit rich for low idle, so that was something we had to tweak a bit between second and third flights. We got that dialed in. And we also spent some time in the first 10 hours chasing down some yaw trim issues. That's a really interesting process that I'll share in future episodes. 500. Windsor traffic, Charlie Golf Alpha, short final 2-5, full stop. Windsor. Not bad. So we have a little bit of de-snagging to do, which is expected, and a bunch of test flying hours to tag team before we get the airplane here, parked beside Scrappy at the Garmin booth. I look forward to seeing you there to show you the airplane. Oh, <laughs> that's something. Yeah, it flies great. 
So just the manifold pressure, that's the weird thing? Yeah, the manifold pressure is weird because like sometimes it's totally stable. And we're gonna have to pull the data because I was a lot of, I love a lot of eyes outside and managing other stuff, but I was watching it just like, and the airplane's totally stable. I can't hear any surging. It's just going like 23, 27, 23, 27, 23, 27, so. It can't be real. I don't think it was. Okay, well, this is what we do it for, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool, man. Well, let's take her apart and look at it, right? Yeah. Glenn brought his plane over to compare notes and help us troubleshoot. Two days apart, the only two 14 tail draggers in Canada. And clearly, if you've been following the build vlog, you'll know that we built this airplane as a pretty collaborative team. But Glenn really did prove that this can be done alone. He did not have any building experience beyond being kind of mechanically inclined. What he was really good at was research, and we ended up calling him the director of research because he shared so much information with our project as he learned things. And like every good producer, I'm going to make sure my talent is hydrated. And it's braided to about here, and then it goes straight down to the bag, and it's just a little Our biggest showstopper was a leak we found. That's probably got to be addressed. Because if you go for an hour, it's going to be a lot of oil up there. Oh, yeah. I think it's leaking from this bolt area here. And I noticed this on the run-up, just the slightest pool of oil in here, but that's, I think it's coming out of there. It is not simple to get this prop governor gasket changed. I guess if we don't have to unplumb it, right? That's the concern. Yeah. I think we have to get into the back here. All right, so after removing, well, I guess a quarter of the baffle, we have access to the governor. We are going to replace the gasket. So there's the old gasket. There's the new gasket. All right, well, there is the newly installed gasket and the governor. Here's open. So the problem with our manifold pressure was that this fitting does not have a restrictor. So, a rivet one of this size and center drilled it with a tiny bit. And then I used the soft Scotch Brite wheel to shrink the rivet head and round it off as it was going to be living in a rubber tube that's kind of soft, so I didn't want it cutting into it. We'll probably ultimately replace this with the actual restrictor fitting, but after a ground run and a few flights, we confirmed this is working and it stabilized our manifold pressure readings. Future episodes will cover the rest of the test flight program and what it took to finish out the required hours while also considering the engine break-in process. And we did all of it in less than a month while trying to get this bird to AirVenture. That was it. I think I just crossed over the 25 hours. Dave and I crushed it today. Full-time work. Look at that, that's hilarious. I'm having a hard time loading that screen. I had a picture of that. That is what 25 hours within 25 miles looks like. We did it in most of it in one day. Dave and I were hardcore. Morning, I did three hours. Last night I did two. Dave came in and did two flights, almost three hours, and then over two hours, so we could get this done the last of the hours in one day. Total oh, marathon. Awesome. I can't, I can't thank Dave enough for working this hard, and the rest of the team, of course, but right now, to make it to AirVenture, we had to crank and get these hours done in like one day because of the weather we've faced lately, and we need to get our certificate of airworthiness issued, and we have like less than a week to get the paperwork done with Transport Canada. So, please, Transport Canada, help us out. And hopefully this airplane makes it to AirVenture, and I will see you there at the Carmen booth. Oh, Here comes Steve. He's just finished the 25 hours that is required for us to request our certificate of airworthiness that will let us go more than 25 miles from the airport. So we have done a lot of rectangles in the county. So thanks so much for following along with this build project. I'm really excited about the next phase, which is gonna be sharing the process of planning and executing missions in this thing. The first one being AirVenture. I'm gonna to try to publish the arrival the first day of the event. 